X-Play, TV's most watched video game show. Today on X-Play, lock up your Raptors, we preview the latest game in the Turok series. And then our review of Endless Ocean will have you donning a virtual wetsuit. Plus, we preview the all new Alone in the Dark. It's creepy, it's immersive, it's back. All this and much more, right now on X-Play. It's game time. Welcome to X-Play, the center of the gaming universe. I'm Morgan Webb. And I'm Adam Sessler. We're coming to you from the G4 Studios in Los Angeles on Thursday, January 31st. Mm -hmm. On today's show, our dreams of dinosaur carnage are realized. Turok is poised for his comeback, and we've got a preview. Plus, we review Endless Ocean, the diving sim for all you aquaphobes that you've all been waiting for. And remember, video games don't have to be limited to chainsaw kills and jiggle animations. Then we go on location to a video game store that actually respects the unwashed masses, which includes me. And we turn off the lights and tell all our friends to go home so we can preview Alone in the Dark. But first, let's go over to Morgan for all of today's headlines in our gaming update. Thanks, Adam. The 2007 Game Critics Awards have been announced, and the winner is 2K Boston's underwater utopian shooter, Bioshock. The Game Critics Awards are voted on by a group of the industry's leading game journalists, including X-Play's own Adam Sessler. Following closely behind Bioshock's first place finish is the orange box from Valve. This five-game collection not only extended the Half-Life storyline, but also impressed gamers with its ingeniously designed puzzle shooter, Portal. Finally in at the number three spot is Infinity Ward's Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare, which has already sold well over 7 million units worldwide. Now, just a reminder, Bioshock was X-Play's 2007 Game of the Year. We were right, as always. Rumors regarding Halo Wars have recently been shot down by Microsoft. Ensemble Studios' Halo-themed real-time strategy game was rumored to support cross-platform play between the Xbox 360 and the PC. New information from Microsoft has confirmed that despite speculation, there are currently no plans for a PC version of the game. Microsoft says the game is being developed from the ground up exclusively for the Xbox 360. It looks like Halo 2 and Shadowrun are going to have to hold down the Games for Windows live service all by themselves. Earlier this month, Capcom announced that a playable version of Street Fighter IV would appear at the AOU 2008 Amusement Expo in Japan. In the meantime, Capcom has been nice enough to share a new batch of screenshots showing off the game's detailed 3D backgrounds and electricity-filled particle effects system. These latest screens also show fan-favorite Ken Masters taking a fireball point Blank in the face from his red and white garbed rival, Ryu. The game is believed to be a multi-platform title, but to date has only been confirmed as an arcade release. With Grand Theft Auto 4's quickly approaching release date of April 29th, Rockstar Games is preparing themselves for public outcry regarding the game's crime-centric premise. After a recent 90-minute press demo, Rockstar Games' VP Dan Hauser said that he expects reactions from the mainstream media simply because they've had so much of it in the past. He also wished that video games were treated the same as other types of media. That's all for today's gaming update. Be sure to visit us on the web at g4tv.com slash xplay to continue getting all of today's up-to-the-minute video game news. But now let's go over to Adam, who is ready to give us a preview of a game that has three of our favorite things. Big guns, dinosaurs, and elite special forces. Thank you, Morgan. Well, there's nothing worse than tracking down an escaped war criminal on a dangerous foreign planet. Well, unless you throw some hungry raptors into the mix. Now, this is the task set before Joseph Turok and the Dinosaur Hunter's latest installment. Here's our preview of Turok. It's 6 a.m. The early morning sunlight filters through the jungle canopy and glints off the blade of your Kabur USMC combat knife. It's zero hour, and soon you'll kill, 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 kill. Sorry, I just had a flashback to my time in the sh**. I've got to remember, Charlie's not the enemy here. That big ass Utah Raptor is. And he's just one of the prehistoric enemies you'll encounter in the to be released Turok. 
So we're here with Josh Holmes. He is the head of Propaganda Games, who is making the latest Turok game. I guess one of the questions I've always had is, why Turok? So, I mean, what we wanted to do was kind of take the series back to its roots, get back to the things that made Turok so cool when it first came out, um, and then, you know, kind of reinvent it for next gen. This is a planet that's kind of got its, its own crazy evolution cycle. So you will see some cool creatures. Um, and then, you know, the thing that we've really focused on is putting the creatures and, and the human opponents together in, in, in kind of a sandbox and letting you do your thing and use them against one another and play them off of each other. So you mentioned the game sort of uses sandbox play. What is the structure of the game? Is it not your typical linear shooter? So the story of the game is, is fairly linear, you know, in the way that we kind of parse that out. But what we've tried to do is create these areas in the game that are sandbox zones, sort of combat zones that you can approach in a number of different ways, which is awesome. Um, basically everything in, in the game is completely dynamic AI. So, you know, every time you play, the AI is making decisions based on what you do and what each of the AIs do. So it all plays out differently each time. Obviously we've been talking a lot about the single player game, but multiplayer, uh, how is it going to work in, in, inside of this new Turok universe? It's uh, a variety of different modes. So we've got competitive stuff like Deathmatch, Team Deathmatch, Capture the Flag, it's all Capture the Flag, objective modes, we call it war games, but it's basically uh, objective-based team play. And then we also have four-player co-op. So we have a few specific maps that have been designed as co-op missions. But you probably don't get to play as a dinosaur. No playing as a dinosaur. Okay. Well, you heard it here first. Sandbox gameplay, sticky bomb guns, dinosaur suicide bombers. What more could you possibly want? Oh, a release date, huh? Turok is scheduled for release on February 5th, but we'll have the review tomorrow. Coming up on X-Play, we dive into the endless ocean with our brutally honest review of this undersea odyssey. And then we go on location to a game store made for gamers by gamers. Plus, one of the original scary games makes its next-gen debut. We preview Alone in the Dark. It's just ahead. Stay tuned. X-Play presents GDC 08. Come along as Adam and Morgan uncover the very latest in gaming. X-Play from the GDC starts February 18th, only on G4. Welcome back to X-Play. Sometimes the call of the sea can be like a siren, beckoning underwater explorers to its briny depths. But she's a harsh mistress, and potential adventurers like me are often hindered by the fact that it's cold, it's wet, and there are sharks. Thankfully, there's a new game that allows me to travel a few leagues under the sea without ever leaving my couch. Here's our review of Endless Ocean. <laughs> Endless Ocean is a sea diving simulator for the Wii that's, well, barely a video game. There are almost no clear-cut goals here. Most of the pleasure is simply derived from exploring the ocean in all her mysterious beauty. You play as an expert scuba diver, but there isn't much of a storyline, save for a frumpy love interest that you occasionally chat with on the boat. The draw here is the beautiful underwater environments. The seas of fictional island Manoa Lai are teeming with virtual life. You'll frequently get to feed fish, pet dolphins, and thank Stingrays for killing Steve Irwin. Allegedly. We're just hoping we don't get into trouble with the FCC for tickling blue tang on the air. As you explore the briny depths, you'll unlock brand new areas on your sea charts. You may have noticed Endless Ocean features some funky music that sounds a lot like Enya. We know it's weird, but it sort of works for the laid-back atmosphere. Since this is the Wii, you can control your character simply by pointing at the part of the screen you want them to go to. And since this game doesn't require precise movement, it works perfectly. There are some assorted mini-games, like the ability to train your dolphin buddies and collecting different species of fish for your aquarium. But for the most part, the game is good because it's so relaxing. Admittedly, this is not for everyone. But if you're not embarrassed to play casual games, you have got to check this out. Endless Ocean gets four blue tanks out of five. Endless Ocean is definitely a relaxing, soothing game, almost trance-like. The atmosphere will allow your mind to wander, but sometimes I guess your thoughts probably go places they shouldn't. Through the dark could you please turn off the Enya? Sorry. You think the new Batman movie's gonna turn out okay? Oh my 
God, how could you say that? What? It's a legitimate question. It's insensitive and selfish. Jeez. Oh, come on. Like, you didn't think the same thing when you heard about it. Okay, maybe. Maybe for half a second. But I have a conscience. I have feelings, too, but I'm also worried that after finally pulling ourselves out of the Schumacher ghetto, the whole franchise could go down the tubes. Listen to yourself. You care more about a fictional character. I care about the whole canon. You worry about that more than a real person. Can I care about both? Look at where we are! We're at the bottom of the ocean, and this is what you want to talk about? Yeah. I hope you get eaten by a shark. Now that's insensitive. Do you know how much air we have in these tanks? Not much, and you're wasting it talking about the fate of the next Batman movie. Nerd. Did you see what happened with Nancy and the Sopranos? Instead of killing her off, they tried to continue with that horrible CG. It almost derailed the entire series. Look, I'm gonna go over to this reef. I think I see a clownfish. Just leave me alone. Well, all I know is we didn't go across town to the IMAX to see I Am Legend because we're big Will Smith fans. With your Great. That's mature. Coming up on X-Play, we go on location to the next-gen game store of your dreams. And later, we're going to give you goosebumps as we preview Alone in the Dark. Stick around. Is there a chance that Left 4 Dead might also appear on the PS3? Welcome back to X-Play. Thanks for your question, Ichi the Sniper. Um, well, you know what? It turns yeah. out the EGM is saying that it will be going to the PS3. We don't know this empirically ourselves, but it, right. it, that is what people are saying. So it seems like that it's going to be likely. We're also, of course, going to see the Xbox 360. Yeah, if it's going to be in one place, likely. it'll be in the other. So Yes. Anyhow, well, <laughs> I'm sure most of you probably get all of your games at the local corporate whorehouse. You should know that this isn't your only option. Far from it. We went on location to check out a next-gen gaming store and discovered a veritable magical chocolate factory of fun. In the bustling Garnett Avenue shopping district of San Diego, an independent store called Games On is attempting to push gaming retail in a brand new consumer-centric direction. The source of this madness, owner Andrew Urbanic. The philosophy behind Games On is to create a store that's sort of responding to what the industry is doing now, that is maturing with the industry. Games On will look pretty alien to someone used to a typical game store. It's open, airy, and clearly much thought has gone into the interior design. This is a video game boutique, a true video game boutique. The service should be a step above what you would find at a big box store and much more personal. And these people who are purchasing games drop three-figure receipts every time they walk into a game store. We've had a lot of people surprised that we can do a store like this and not increase our prices. There's simply no reason that a customer should pay for my choice of flooring. All games in the store are shown on HDTVs exclusively. These days, games are run in high definition. Games are created in high definition. So walking into a store and seeing it on a small 20-inch monitor isn't going to do the game justice. The approach seems to be garnering positive response all around. Definitely has more stock than any other game store I've been to. There's even a super high-quality demo room for showing off the top titles to potential buyers. Games On represents what is hopefully a new trend in gaming retail, an attempt to mature an element of the industry that hasn't matured in decades. We provide a place where they can. They can browse on their own. They can ask questions and feel like they're being listened to. They can ask questions in an environment that they feel more comfortable in. And by doing so, they can learn more about what video games offer. Last week, Mr. Sark asked you to join him in a chase through World of Warcraft. A resident hardcore gamer stepped in the role of a fugitive on the run to see if you could track him down. Now, he quickly found a whole server full of people after him, and here's what went down. Earlier this week, on the sleepy little server of Nazjatar, Stormwind Castle had a little problem. His name was Doc Thimble. Thimble thought he could evade the authorities, but he didn't count on, well, so many authorities. 
Even hours early, there were so many recruits preparing for the search that the server began to lag. Doc had to turn to some Nazjatarian Samaritans to help him get into the castle unseen. And when Doc Thimble finally emerged, the search was over before it started. The lucky winner, who happened to be peering under the staircase where Doc appeared, was Terran Rip of Norganon. But that was just the beginning. First order of business was a massive foot race through the castle, which was won by the fleet-footed Harrison Ford, aka Jadids of Illidan. The search may have been brief, but the anarchy continued for almost two hours, finally ending with a massive dust-up with a Horde raid. Which reminds me, we would like to congratulate the Horde Guild Nascent on a very successful raid. Perhaps Doc Thimble will have to pay them a visit sometime. When X Play returns, we preview Alone in the Dark, which is the fifth game in the creepy franchise, and thankfully has nothing to do with Uwe Boll. But first, let's take a look at who's keeping the beat in today's leaderboard. Here are the people with the best scores in Rock Band's solo drums mode. Welcome back to x -Play. Back in 1992, Rex in Effect was teaching us all how to shake our rumps. And PC owners retreated to one of the scariest video games of all time, Alone in the Dark. Now, 16 years later, the game is back from the grave in its fifth installment. Dropping the numerals, the new chapter is simply named Alone in the Dark. Catchy, here's our preview. Edward Canby seems to be having a very disturbing day. He doesn't know where he is, and he doesn't know how he got there. Canby's century surfing story continues in Atari's redux of Alone in the Dark. We sat down with Atari's Todd Slepian to talk about the game. The new Alone in the Dark is basically one cataclysmic night in New York City. What we did to make Central Park appear as it does in, in real life is Eden, the studio that's creating this, um, they used uh, satellite imaging technology and, and GPS technology. They used thousands of photographs as well and photo rendering to come up with an incredibly realistic um, depiction of New York and Central Park. The fire in this game is pretty revolutionary. If you take an object and stick it in the fire, it's going to start to burn and then it's, it's going to progressively build across that object. You can break an object and stick it in the fire and use it as a torch to light your way in a darkened area or you can use it against your enemy as a weapon. The inventory system is done in real time um, and it doesn't take you out of the action and in a separate inventory screen. Basically with the press of a button, uh, the main character opens up his jacket and that's where all his inventory is. It's done in real time so if an enemy was attacking you, you'd be attacked if you were looking inside your jacket to find an item. Everything that you do see in the world you'll be able to pick up, you'll be able to interact with. You can pick up things and use them as a weapon. You can pick up things and break them. Uh, the ropes in the game display real world properties. You can tie them around yourself. You can use them to scale a building. It's all about immersion, keeping the player in the game. The original Die Hard was a huge influence on the developers. It's basically one man struggle against seemingly overwhelming odds, um, and that's basically uh, what what takes place in this game. It's it's the it's the struggle of Edward Carnby to figure out what's going on around him in one given night against seemingly impossible odds. As most of you are probably aware, Alone in the Dark was turned into a movie by the famous Uwe Boll, or infamous I should say. Of course, critics panned the film, audiences ignored it, and a friend of mine gouged her eyes out during the first reel. The film certainly did not help the long-standing tradition of horrible video game to movie adaptations, but believe it or not, it's not all Dr. Boll's fault. In today's excellence, we take a look at the top five bad video game movies not done by Uwe Boll. At number five is Final Fantasy, The Spirits Within. This movie looked great at the time, and well, that's about it. At number four is Street Fighter, the movie, which managed the feat of having a storyline worse than the actual game. Look, it was so bad, it killed Walt Julia. Coming in at number three is Super Mario Brothers, the movie. 
While the casting of Dennis Hopper, Bob Hoskins, and John Leguizamo might sound interesting, this movie set back adaptations for at least a decade. And our number two is DOA Dead or Alive. Just a word of advice, if you ever receive an invitation to fight in a kill or be killed tournament on a remote island or an invitation to see this movie, you pick the tournament of death. It'll be less painful. That's good advice. And our number one, the all-time worst video game movie ever is Doom. It's aliens meets red planet meets I'm going to put a gun in my mouth to end the pain. All right, now in case we just woke you, it's time for X-Play Replay. Today we review the Wii's diving sim Endless Ocean. While it may sound like a snooze, the game actually manages to deliver a hypnotic, enjoyable experience even with the Enya sound alike. This relaxing journey into the sea will probably save you some money on day spas. We gave Endless Ocean four starfishes out of five. Now that's all we got for you today, but be sure to tune in tomorrow night at 8 p.m. for an all-new X-Play. On Friday's show, we'll have our review of Turok. We'll see if raptors, big guns, and stabby combat make for a good old time. Then we find out what it takes to bring the noise in video games as we profile a sound designer in Will Work For Games. Plus, don't make any rash football bets before you see our Super Bowl predictions. And hold off on making that chip dip, too. It's really good when it's fresh. It is much better when it's fresh. Yeah, Otherwise, you know, we're going to have a lot of sick gamers wandering around here. The guacamole gets that brown stuff on top, and you're like, ah, so just make it fresh. That's disgusting. See you tomorrow. Thanks for watching.